Hi everybody and welcome to a video on Gravit.io. This is a introduction to this wonderful online web-based vector graphics application. It runs in your web browser, which means it is truly cross-platform. Um, I've done a couple of live streams about this already, but I wanted to create a little bit more comprehensive introduction to Gravit.io, especially for those who are trying to get into creating something for the first time or getting into vector graphics for the first time. And I think that it's a great option for anybody because there's no risk involved and there's no cost involved. It's completely free and you don't have to download anything. Just create an account. I'm just going to log in and show you exactly what you're going to see. So here's my login page. I'm just going to click login. You can choose to save your username and password if you like. And then I'm presented with my design page. So here are just a few designs that I've created so far using Gravit. And I have folders in here as well, which is something that's a really great feature that they introduced a just a little while back. This is a very young program, um, web-based program. And so you have a design page, which is really nice. It's a very nice visual way of being able to see exactly what you have worked on. And these don't have to be finished project projects. Um, they can just be works in progress. You don't have to publish anything. This isn't um, live to anybody by default. You can choose to share it with the Gravit community if you like. And once you're done with something, you can always download it to your hard drive and either work on it further in a different application or be able to use it and send it to uh, a printing company if you want to get it printed or whatever you desire to be able to use it for. For example, I have a, a an iPhone uh, background here that I created for my son and I just sent it to him as a JPEG and he was able to use it as his iPhone background. I've got several illustration pro projects going on. I created my own logo, my personal logo, the JP here, inside Gravit as an experiment. I wanted to be able to see if this had the capabilities that I needed to be able to create good logo designs. And I believe it does. I believe that there's probably more that they're going to introduce that will make designing even better. But like I said, for something that one runs in your web browser, is completely free. There's no cost involved, no subscription. You can get into vector graphic design. I'm going to show you um, a couple of things that I have rebuilt. Well, let me show you this one. This one was done completely in Gravit, end to end. Every shape, every piece in here was done in a web browser right here in Gravit. So I'm going to Make that full screen so it's nice and big for you who are watching maybe on YouTube hopefully and then I'm gonna go through this and show you exactly what Gravit is and I'll have a video series on this so if you get stuck on a tool or there's something that I don't mention in this video uh, be reminded that this is an introduction so what Gravit is uh, and I want to just show you where everything is and give you just a brief overview of what you're looking at to help it not be so complicated and mysterious the first time you open Gravit. So first thing you want to do is just create a free account. That's going to give you the design page, which initially will be blank. There might be some help files or some support links and stuff like that. Uh, and feel free to ask questions. The other thing about Gravit is it has a very uh, wonderful built-in community, a social aspect because it's a web-based technology and you're able to ask uh, advice or questions from people like me um, right inside Gravit. So first of all, let me just give you an overview of the interface. So the interface, like I said, it would just run in a tab in your browser. I'm using Chrome because I feel like it's probably one of the best web browsers out there, but it will run in any modern web browser. Right up here at the top, we have uh, the icon, which will take you back to Gravit's homepage. We've got a file menu, just like you would see in any desktop app application. Under file, we can choose to create a new design. It's very nice because it actually will tell you the shortcut keys right here in the menu, which I think is very helpful. So new design is Alt-N. Many of them are different from your desktop applications because web browser, a web browser is an application that runs on your desktop. So it doesn't... Uh, it, some of them will be different because the um, control S would actually save the web page in most web browsers. So Alt N or Control N would open a, a new um, a new um, 
a new tab or a new window in your web browser. So some of these will use Alt instead or Control Shift, um, things like that. So you'll see that when you look in here. So Control S will actually save it, save the document. You can save as, you can import SVG, you can import um, EPS, which is really, really nice if you uh, have created things in other vector-based applications or receive files. For example, if you're a business or a company and you have a an SVG or EPS version of your logo, you'd be able to upload it in here and then share it with uh, a group, maybe of coworkers or something, and be able to use your vector logos in documents and be able to implement them in designs and all kinds of things. So you could also create them in here, which is really cool. And we can export, and some of the export features that they've just introduced are new. We'll get into that. I'll do a video just on exporting. And you can also just print the document itself. So that's all in your file. Edit. We have most of your uh, basic features that you would see in a desktop application like Microsoft Word. You can paste. You can uh, edit, copy, cut. Um, there's a couple other things in here like pasting special or paste in place, which will paste it exactly uh, in the same um, uh, in the same location as it was copied from. So it pasted it directly in, rather than like sort of offsetting it so that you can see that it's actually a, a, a pasted thing and not just like it didn't do anything. I'm sure you've seen that before. Like when you copy and paste something, it's not right where you copied it from. It moves it over just a little bit. We'll paste in place. We'll paste it exactly in the same spot. Um, paste inside a selection, which is very, very cool. Basically, it creates, creates a clipping mask. And we'll get into all of these things in the future if you don't know what they are. Uh, and then there's settings under the edit menu as well. And these are just general settings for um, for things that you can see right in here. So resize border width, width on transform. I think I'm going to check that. That will be like the stroke or the outline. In this, it calls it the border. And grab it. Um, and when I transform a an object that has a border or stroke that I've applied to it, I would like it to be scaled with that most of the time. I can uncheck that if I don't want that, but I'm going to save those settings. We have an insert menu. We can insert photos. We can insert um, uh, icons. There's a whole icon library. I'm going to just show you that because that's one of the coolest things I think uh, Gravit has. These are all vector icons, and there's just tons and tons of them. We can search these icons. So if we're looking for social media, I can just type in social, and it's going to present me with a whole bunch of social icons that are just ready to go. And I can just click on it and say I want Facebook. That's a pretty common one. Let me get the... Um, uh, I just want a black Facebook icon, maybe... Um, Maybe this one right here. So I can just click on it, and there it is. It's inserted right in here for me. And I can see over here that it's uh, that it's a path, and it even names the layer Facebook. And I can freely scale this. I can hold Shift to constrain the proportions so I don't squash it like this. Don't want to do that. So I'll hold Shift. Okay. So I've got my icon in here. Um, one of the great things about Applications like this, I love uh, vector vector graphics in general, but um, having a pasteboard, anything outside the canvas that doesn't disappear because it's not on the canvas like in Photoshop, I think is so, so helpful and so powerful. For example, I could have a whole bunch of these things off to the side here. I'm just going to use my Alt key and uh, I can drag copies like this. These could all be separate icons, maybe a whole list of social icons that are just ready to go for me, but not cluttering up my canvas. Um, and if I didn't want to see them at all, but I still want to keep them in the document, I can just check the eyeball right over here in the layers panel. That's the next thing I want to show you here. This is the layers panel. We'll get back to some of the, uh, the file menu up there. But right over here on the left-hand side, right underneath the save and the undo and redo, um, buttons, you'll see the layers panel, and we can create a new layer. And layers are different than objects, okay? These are all objects that are in this layer, and I can create as many layers as I want, and these layers act just like the layers in uh, Adobe Illustrator. Uh, you can have objects that are inside of these layers. For example, I'm going to select all of these objects, so they're all selected here on the screen, and I'm just going to drop them into a different layer. So I'm going to hide that entire layer. 
this is just so fantastic. I love having this capability. One of the things that I use this feature for a lot is if I want to create the front and back of a document in the same document, I can do that using layers and I can name one layer the front and one layer the back. It's just a great way of organizing all of the objects and shapes, images, pieces of text, whatever that are in my document. And I can put them in different layers and you can get crazy and have as many different layers as you want. But having a layers panel one is a super powerful feature and it's going to really help you. Uh, so go ahead and explore that. Just going to get rid of those layers for now. Um, next we have, so I talked about the insert, we can insert icons, we can insert photos, we can upload images, and we can just insert an image. This will show us um, images that we have used in other documents. For example, I'm working on a, um, um, a, uh, a vector portrait of Matthew Mercer, and so I've pasted a photo from a, uh, from a website from his IMDb a page into a different um, Gravit document, I'm able to import that or insert it from the insert menu. If I choose photo, which is right above icon, this will show me the Gravit library of photos that I can use. And I can search these photos. I can just browse through them until I find something that I like. One thing that I find really great about this feature is that I don't have to jump out to Google or somewhere else to find really nice photos. I believe that these are all royalty free. I think they would have to be to be able to be offered like this on here, which is another great feature that I, I noticed. I, I recognize some of these from uh, Unsplash, which is a great website for free photography. Um, and you can just keep scrolling and it keeps loading as you keep scrolling. So really, really cool. So you can insert a photo or you can insert from the market. Now, anything published to the market, you're able to insert into your document. Some of these are full designs. Some of these are icons and illustrations, and you can browse them um, and filter them by that. So these are things that um, other artists using Gravit have made with Gravit and published to the market. Uh, I've done some of these and published into the market and you're able to do the same thing. So if there are assets that you'd like to create and be able to share these publicly so that other people can use them in their documents, another very, very cool feature. It's like sharing asset libraries, but you can also do it with whole templates, uh, whole layouts, um, just icons, just components, just individual pieces, all kinds of ways that you can share things that you've created with Gravit, with the Gravit community. Uh, I find this to be super, super helpful and just another really, really powerful feature um, of a, a web-based application. It really showcases the power of web technology, being able to combine social aspects um, with a great design tool, just really opens up a whole lot more possibilities than just a static desktop application. So being able to pull in assets from the market, which is under the insert menu, we can insert from the market, really powerful feature. With a modify menu where we can arrange, we can align, we can transform our shapes, uh, we can do things with paths and modify those things. View, this gives us all the guides, grids, uh, rulers, uh, and we can check on and off things that we want to show or not show. There's also, a, I'm using the dark skin right now, but if you see the light skin, you can uh, feel free to use that or you can change it to the dark skin, which I prefer. Um, so there's different skins that you're able to use for your preference. Um, right up here at the top, basically, this is your, your toolbar, and it makes it very, very simple. There's a single toolbar up at the top. It's always here. We have our selection tools. We have our slicing tools, our knife tool. We have all of our shape tools under the shape drop down. So we've got line, pen, bezigon, which is a... Uh, a pen tool that only creates straight lines, so it doesn't create curves. I, I love that tool. Uh, rectangle, ellipse, triangle, polygon, and star. Those are all smart objects that will allow you to do really special things. And I'll have a video probably for each one of those things because they're all really fantastic. Then we have our text tool. We can just use the text tool, click and start typing. Um, or we can drag the... Um, the text tool to create a, a text box like this, just like just like in um, Publisher or other desktop um, 
publishing programs you might have used. There's also a media tab, which essentially is the insert menu again, um, where we can insert image, upload an image, we can insert a photo icon or insert from the market. And we've got some transform controls for rotating and editing points. Uh, we can group things, ungroup them. We can merge things. So this has true Boolean operations where you can cut objects up with other objects or unify objects together. Really, really powerful. We have a clip button, which uh, will, when you have multiple objects selected or a group that you would like to be clipped inside of another shape, you can do that. And we can split those. We can split up those objects as well. Uh, we have layering, which is for, forward and back, but having a layers panel that's always visible over here, you can you can choose not to have it visible just by clicking right over here. So we've got the format way over to the right hand side, format, which is your appearance properties and your layers. So if you'd like a really clean interface and maybe you're just um, creating a shape or drawing something out, you can just hide everything if you'd like. And then all the way on the right hand side, this panel here is your appearance panel. So let me select a shape here and we'll get appearance attributes. So our border, our, um, first of all, our, our, uh, um, our, our object opacity, how transparent it is. And then we have our border, our fill. We can open the path or close the path if it didn't get closed for some reason. And we can also apply effects. Very, very cool. I can choose whether to make this uh, individual piece exportable, uh, which again will be covered in the export video further. So I hope that you guys, first of all, take take a little bit of time and sign up for a free account with Gravit.io because I'm going to have a whole lot more videos coming using this web-based application. I think that it's great. It's going to be sort of my primary tool for illustration. I still use a ton of stuff in Google Drive because um, I love the sharing capabilities and the way that I'm able to work with uh, my wife in the office and and uh, collaboration when, with productivity and documents and keeping all of those things in one place. That's really, really nice. But for something that has just a little bit more power um, than uh, Google Drawings, Gravit.io may be the thing for you. So I, I suggest, again, go ahead and sign up for this and then follow my, um, I'm going to create a playlist for Gravit and go ahead and, and subscribe so that you can get all of these videos as they come out. So this has been a brief introduction to Gravit. Hope that you guys enjoy it and follow along for more videos to come. See you guys later. Bye for now.